Marahay na aga, Bicolandia, and good morning everyone! Welcome to Ateneo ICTC YouTube channel. I'm Iris and I'll be your host for today's webinar. Before we start, don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell for more webinar updates. So allow me to give you um, some shout out kung mga tagasan po yung mga viewers natin today. So we have... We have from... Camarines Norte and Davao City. Also from Camarines Sur. We have viewers from Oman and we have viewers from Calabanga, from Antipolo, and from Himaaw Elementary School Division of Camarines Sur. So, yan po. Um, so, thank you very much for, for attending our webinar session this morning. Um, nice po namin magpasalamat sa 100, um, ay, 1,000 sub subscribers na, namin po on our YouTube channel. So, maraming maraming salamat po. So, before we formally start, allow me to read the following guidelines. So, the Bicol Association of Catholic Schools, or BOX, and the Ateneo Teacher Training Center, or ATTC, in partnership with Ateneo ICTC, present to you our sixth webinar series entitled Writing Effective, Effective Learning Modules. So, to give us a message, allow me to introduce to you the Board Secretary of the Bicol Association of Catholic Schools, Father Arnell. Thank you very much, Father Arnold. To give us another message, may I proudly introduce to you the University President of Ateneo Dinaga University, Father Robert Exegel Rivera.
Uh, mga tugang, Diyos marhay na aga sa sa Indo Gabos. A warm welcome to everyone to this webinar on effective uh, learning module writing brought to you by the Bicol Association of Catholic Schools, the Ateneo Teacher Training Center, and the Ateneo Information and Communications Technology Center. We know that during this pandemic, our schools, our region, and indeed the whole world has been in disarray with many of our everyday activities uh, disrupted and our work, especially in education, having to traverse new paths and go to new frontiers where we have never gone uh, before. But if there is a positive light in the midst of uh, this disarray, it is the fact that many of us are getting together to help one another, to be able to aid, especially in our education mission. And that is why I am truly happy uh, that Ateneo Denaga is a partner in this worthwhile endeavor together with the Bicol Association of Catholic Schools in helping our teachers be equipped to face what we have called the new normal. I pray that this seminar uh, this morning will be a fruitful one for all of you and that all of you will derive something of value that will help you in your mission of education, especially during this pandemic crisis. A special word of thanks to the uh, BACS, the Bicol Association of Catholic Schools, especially to uh, Father Arnel Kabangunay for organizing this webinar, to our ATTC, especially Dr. Arnulfo Popoy Reganit no, for being a resource speaker, and of course to our friends in ITTC, especially uh, their director, Mr. Uh, John Bozar, for bringing us this webinar this morning. Again, welcome to everyone. Dios mabalus po. Thank you so much, Father President. So our speaker for this morning is certainly familiar for some of you. Aside from his expertise in the industry, he's been with us during our fourth webinar session. Dr. Arnulfo Arganit is the founding dean of the College of Education of Ateneo de Naga University, Naga City. During his watch for 20 years, the College of Education has been designated by the Commission on Higher Education as Center of Excellence and the Professional Regulation Commission as one of the top 10 high-performing teacher education institutions in the whole Philippines. Presently, he is the director of the Ateneo Teacher Training Center, or ATTC, and the Regional Program Coordinator of the Private Education Assistance Committee, or PEAC, a trustee of the Fund for Assistance to Private Education, or FAPE. He is a paper presenter in international conferences as well as the recipient of numerous awards, citations, and distinctions. He is a fellow of the Philippine Educational Measurement and Evaluation Association. The Philippine Association for Teacher Education, or PAFTE, has bestowed upon him the PAFTE Paramangal Award during its golden anniversary last October 22, 2018 at Novotel Hotel, Cubao, Quezon City. In 2018, the Sangguni Lalawigan of Camarini Sur passed Board Resolution No. 796, Series of 2018, commending Dr. Reganit as an exemplary educator that possesses professionalism and excellence in his field. The Sangguni and Panlalawigan highly recognized his wide contributions in the need of quality and excellent educators through the formation and continuing education of teachers in the province of Camarines Sur and in the entire Bicol region. Other awards he received are International Diploma Honor in Education, ABI, Golden Achiever Award in Education, Professorial Chair Award, and Faculty Awards. He has published research in referred and indexed journals. Also, he is an author of many books in professional education courses, which are widely used in the country. He is a sought-after speaker and lecturer in the region who can authoritatively expound on such topics classroom assessment, test construction, 
curriculum design and evaluation, teaching its strategies, classroom management, and teacher training and development. Dr. Yaganit is locally and nationally recognized in teacher education and development and training. Everyone, let us all welcome on screen Dr. Arnulfa Aaron R. Reganit. Good morning. Can you hear me? Before I start my talks on writing effective learning modules, I would like to thank the Bicol Association for Catholic Schools for inviting me as the resource speaker. Also, I wish to thank the uh, Ateneo ICTC for hosting this webinar. We will be together for almost two hours on the topic, writing effective learning modules. Let me begin. As announced by our president, schools will open on August 24, but there will be no face-to-face -face class. And so in the Department of Education, what will be adapted is blended learning approach. The Commission on Higher Education has, all the, has also done its part in responding to COVID-19 pandemic. Our secretary of the Department of Education once said, matagal na itong blended education. Naabutan ko ito noong teacher pa ako sa UP. Hindi ito bago. Ginagamit ito sa mga eskwelahan para maging effective ang edukasyon. In the recent survey of the Department of Education, findings revealed that 8.8 .8 million parents would prefer that their children will be using modules. And 3.8 million parents would prefer online learning and 3.9 million parents prefer blended learning. 1.4 million opted for educational TV, 900,000 parents radio-based instruction and 500,000 parents other modalities. But the sad thing about the finding of this survey, almost 400 parents, their children have transferred to public schools. With this pandemic, many schools with internet access have shifted to online learning. The use of online learning is aimed for the continuation of our classes amid the coronavirus outbreak. For the so-called distance or online learning to be effective, as students, including as teachers, will need a computer and stable internet. However, survey shows many of our students do not have computers and access to internet when they go home. While the presence of technology is one good story of innovation, access to them is another story. This issue is rooted in the larger social problem of digital inequality. Only those who have the resources to buy gadgets and to get an internet connection are privileged to continue their learning despite physical distance. To address these digital inequalities, a modular teaching approach is highly recommended. What is modular approach? It is a method of teaching using modules or learning packets that usually occurs in series. With this method, the learner learns to work independently, even without the supervision of the teacher. The modular approach is based on the program instruction of Skinner. It is a system in which a pre-established subject matter is broken down into sequential steps. 
program instruction is characterized by self-based, self-administered instruction, which is presented in a logical sequence and with multiple content repetitions. Skinner argues that learning can be accomplished if the content is divided into small, incremental steps, and if learners get immediate feedback, reinforcement, and reward. These are the principles of program instruction. Learners are active. In a traditional classroom setting, what teachers do is we give a lecture, the students listen to us, and afterwards we give a quiz. But in the program instruction, in a modular approach, it requires a lot of reading on the part of our students. Not only reading, there are a lot of activities that we have to do. There are a lot of exercises, drills, and assessments that we have also to do. Another is on-the-spot feedback. Since our students are physically remote, feedback is very necessary. If we want our students to have an improved performance, if we want our students to be able to move forward to the next curriculum objectives, then feedback should be promptly communicated to our students. Another is gradual steps. Lessons are divided into chunks of information to prevent our students from failing. Self-pacing. In a modular approach, there are students who are slow to complete. There are still case students who are quick to complete. Each learner has his or her own pace. We teachers should respect this diversity and allow them to decide on a desirable speed of learning. And lastly, we have to allow our students to evaluate the instructional program under the development and teachers should modify accordingly. With this, what is learning module? A learning module is a self-paced and self-contained. Self-contained, okay, it's like SM tagline, we've got it all. Everything should be found in the module. We don't refer our student to look for another reference material. Okay, self-contained learning material that sets everything a learner needs to know from the course, from the subject, from objectives, down to understanding the results of assessment to know the progress of learning. It is a tool that provides course materials in a logical and sequential order, guiding students through the contents and assessments in the order specified by us. It is a self-learning kit, usually consisting packaged learning activities, either online or printed, that are to be accompanied by a learner without the supervision of a teacher. The objective of learning module is to provide a full range of information that we teachers need to successfully teach a lesson, a unit, or a course for students to learn. What are the three ways to produce learning modules? Number one is to adapt. And this is the simplest way of producing learning modules. There are many readily available modules. And so what we do is to adapt them. The second one is we adapt, we revise, we modify. And the third is we develop our own learning modules for our students. What is good of developing our own modules is that we develop modules according to the context, according to the needs of our students. Therefore, our developed modules are designed after our students. How do we plan writing learning module? These are the questions that we have to ask. 
how should I plan for the entire learning modules to continue providing holistic and educational experience? Number two, what special techniques will I apply to promote active and effective learning through a learning module? These are the variables that we have to consider in planning our learning modules. Number one, learner's profile. Number two, context issues. And number three, learning outcomes. Issues to address under learner's profile. Are my students ready for modular, flexible learning approach? What types of students do I have who will be using learning module? What are the circumstances of my students that I need to consider in planning, designing, and delivering the activities? Looking at the profile of our learners, it's better that we should also look into the literacy level of our students their reading ability, and their comprehension. We should also look into the study skills of our students. Are they self-motivated to learn? The prior knowledge of our students about the subject, about the lesson, and the learning situations. Under context issues, we have to look into the following. Under GCQ, ECQ, MECQ, MGCQ, are our students' family financially surviving? Do their parents have jobs? Do they have learning resources at home? Do they have access to textbooks and other learning materials? Do they have access to library or internet cafe? Do they have access to laboratory equipment? Under learning outcomes, before you start writing your learning module, I advise that we go back to the core syllabus or to the curriculum guide. We need to have the following essential information. Subject or course description. What are the learning competencies expected the students who acquire in this particular course and this particular subject? What are the learning outcomes in college? We have to consider the program learning outcomes, the course learning outcomes, and the instructional learning outcomes. And lastly, we should also into we should also look into the content lists. What are the lessons that should be covered in these learning modules? We begin with course specification. This course specification is the most important document produced during the planning of the course since its function is to define what is to produce in a particular course or in a particular subject. I would suggest that before we give our students module one, the first module, the first module should be attached or should we attach this course or subject specification Okay, in the first module. The typical contents of our course or subject specification are the following. Course learning outcomes or learning competencies. What are the contents that are covered in this module? Learner's profile, assessment details, and then we have delivery costs. Let me give you okay, an example of sample course or subject specification. So we have here course number, okay, semester and the year offered, class schedule, unit credits, and prerequisites. Then these are the most important part of the course specification. Okay, what is the course description? What is the subject all about? Next, the course learning outcomes. Next, the learner's profile and content. Next, we have assessment and evaluation details. Next, we have monitoring details. So this should be the first page of our 
module, first module. Then we have the Quares budget. Now, how are the learning modules designed? The learning modules are designed in accordance to the instructional models. There is no standard format for a certain module. There is no such. The way we organize the module, the way we design a module depends on our instructional model. It can be that the instructional model, instructional design is decided upon by the school, by the teacher, or by our department. The second, the learning modules are subdivided into units, sometimes corresponding to a week's work. In prints or printed modules, each unit is like a chapter of a book. Now, since I mentioned that the way we organize, the way we design our learning modules depends on instructional designs or instructional models. Let me present samples of these instructional models. We have the ADI model, a SURE model, the Gani events of instruction. We have the Merrell's principles of instruction. We have the KEMT instructional design. We have the five E's. Next, we have the four A's. And then we have the GRR, and then my own instructional design, the Adidas. So briefly, we shall discuss each of these instructional designs. You can choose any of these okay, as your design, okay, as you organize your learning modules. We have the ADI okay, model. Okay? And this design will begin with analysis. Okay? So we look into the profile, the context of our students. Next, we design. And then after we design, we develop. Okay? The development of our learning modules will depend on our design. Next, we implement. And at the end, we evaluate. So this is the AD model. The second one, we have the Assure model. We begin with analysis of students' profiles, students' context, analyze learners. Then we state our objectives. We select methods, media, and materials. We utilize technology, media, and materials. Then we require our students to participate. And then at the end, we evaluate and we revise. Another instructional model that we may adopt in our learning module is the Gagne Nine Events of Instruction. I understand that in the junior high school of Atenaginaga, they use the Gagne Events of Instruction. Now, in the Gagne Nine Events of Instruction, okay, it begins with gaining attention, then informing the learner of the objectives. Third, stimulating recall of prior knowledge. And then we present our lesson. We present our information. We provide guidance of our students. Okay, provide guidance to our students. Then we elicit performance. We provide feedback. We assess performance. And then we enhance retention and transfer. Now, these nine events of instruction are also found in the events in our learning module. Gaining attention, that is through advanced organizer, text preview, or an illustration. Then informing the learner of the objectives. Lesson, unit opener, we inform our students in our module, the learning competencies, the learning outcomes, then stimulating recall a prior learning that is through by schema building. It can be by a organizer, graphic organizer, a mind organizer, presenting the stimulus material that is our input, that is the lesson proper, providing learning guidance that is through our input, eliciting students' performance that is by means of giving drills and exercises, 
then assessing performance, that is by means of our assessments, providing feedback to correct misunderstanding, that is by means of our checklist, and then the last, enhancing retention and transfer, and that is through by reinforcement activities and a further exercises. Another instructional design is the Mirel's principle of instruction. This is problem-based. So we begin with demonstration. The teacher should be able to demonstrate first. And from the demonstration, the student should be able to apply what we absorbed from the demonstration of a teacher. And then the student should be able to integrate that into their personal lives and then able to activate what they learn from the demonstration in their existing knowledge. So this is the Mirel's principle of instruction. Then we have also the CAM instructional model. Analyze, evaluate, develop, design, and then implement. So okay, in the CAM nine stages of instruction, it begins with determination. We have to determine the needs of the learner. It should be followed by defining the topics for instruction, outlining the contents, tasks, and procedures, analyze the characteristics of the learner, define the learning objectives, design the instructional activities and instructional resources, identify available support services, design the assessments and evaluation tools. The CAMP instructional model is not linear. This is not linear. Then we have the five East constructivist instructional model. So this is highly recommended for those okay, teachers in science. So we begin with explore. When we ask the students to explore, all answers are correct. The purpose of this exploration is to make them interested to the topic. Okay, so getting the interest getting them motivated to our topic, to our module. Then after the explore, okay, we ask them to engage. And then, okay, explore, engage. Then, okay, we ask them to elaborate. Then we explain. And the last steps of these five A's, we evaluate. Explore, engage, elaborate, explain, and it ends with evaluation. Next, we have also okay, the K4A's. Okay, okay, for this is, I think, okay, very popular among teachers in the public schools. We have the 4A, we begin with activity that is followed by analysis. And then we have abstraction. Abstraction is the lesson proper. And then it ends with application. And then we have the GRR. For those teachers in the kindergarten up to grade two, I would recommend that the instructional model that we adopt as we organize the module is the GRR. GRR stands for Gradual Release of Responsibility. It begins from us, the teacher will explain, the teacher will discuss, and after we discuss, we gradually release the responsibility to our students Okay, it can be, okay, initially, the students do it okay, with the help of their parents, with the help of their brothers and sisters, but okay, lastly, it should be gradually released to them. They can do it by themselves. That is the GRR, Gradual Release of Responsibility. Now, my own instruction model, I use the Adidas. Adidas stands for we begin with activity, followed by the initial discussion. From the activity, we ask the student to share insights. Okay, from the activity they have done. Next, after the initial discussion, we have input that is the lesson proper. Okay, that is where the teacher gives the lesson. Okay, teaches the students. Next, we have the second D that is the deepening discussion. And then we have A assessments. And then we have as synthesis. Synthesis may come before assessments, okay, or assessments may come before synthesis. So we have the Adidas. 
So these are the different instructional designs you can choose as you organize, as you develop your learning module. Now, let's discuss about content sequencing. Once you have decided on the content of the learning module, you have to put into a suitable order for teaching. Now, the basic principles in the sequencing of our content, we have to observe these basic principles. We have to start from simple to complex, from the known to unknown, from the particular to general, from the concrete to abstract. Then we should also consider the pacing of the content. So, okay, the first is identify the contents that we want to include. Okay, in our learning module, we have to observe basic principles. Okay, then we have how do we pace the content? We have these one release of materials, gradually release, gradually introduce the lessons to our students. Hindi yung biglaan. So gradually release the learning materials, gradually introduce the lessons, right pacing. Next deadlines for the completion of the modules. Okay, when do we expect our students to complete the modules? Then proactive interventions. Researchers have proven that pacing helps students complete the subject or the course. Pacing leads to higher completion rates and distance or flexible learning according to Lean in 2016. Next, providing study guides. Study guides are devices to help learners orient themselves to a new subject, to a new course, and learn how to use it. It acts as reference sources for use when learners have a problem with their course or with their subject. This is an essential component of distance learning, like module or modular approach to help the learner succeed. How do we structure a module? So these are, these are issues that we need to address. How should I structure my printed module? How should I organize the contents of a module? The answer to these questions, organize according to the chosen instructional model, instructional design, which I presented earlier. It's up to you to choose any of those eight or nine instructional designs or instructional models. Now, how do we organize, how do we write a learning module. When we write a learning module, we always begin with course mapping. So we organize, we outline a learning module by contents, if not by contents, according to the learning competencies or according to the learning outcomes. So the way, to, the way we organize our learning modules Okay, it can be by contents, by learning competencies and outcomes. Next, number two, we now proceed to module mapped. Which of these contents, which of these activities and assessments will be included in this particular content or particular contents, competencies and learning outcomes? Next, we now create a module. In making, writing a learning module, make students aware of the outcome and the final requirements. Contents that need to be learned are readily available in the module. That is why our definition earlier of a learning module, it is a self-paced and self-contained. Everything is already found in the module. We don't refer our students to look for another reference material for them to be able to learn, to be able to do activities and to be able for them okay, to work for exercises and reels. The presentation needs to be interactive. 
the students should be able to answer exercises, the drills and assessments, and students accomplish tasks while studying the module. The flow of the module. The flow of the module content is that simply presenting the content, but it should facilitate the learning of content. I always tell my teachers that in a module, we ask ourselves, how do I teach these lessons if I am in the classroom? Can we put that in our module? Can we put that in our module? We are putting our results in a paper, and that is a learning module. If I give you this topic, okay, how would you teach this in class? So the learning module is not a simple presentation of lesson subcontent, but very important that we have to be mindful that our learning modules should facilitate the learning of our students through the contents. We have to stop at certain point to check the understanding of our students. We should allow our students to stop at certain points to try some exercises. We engage in tasks such as observations and reporting, writing learners' insights. Okay, we ask them to stop at certain points to reflect on one's learning. Okay, we allow our students to compare their initial idea and changes it okay after reading after completing okay our learning module make the module easy to use make it very friendly to our students the sequence is like walking through the actual lesson in the classroom all information for one module or learning competency learning outcome does not require students to go out from the present module. They self-contain, everything is already found in the module. Contents can be easily read immediately without looking okay, okay, for many books, other reference materials, or downloading too many files. Make the module appealing and captivating. Appeal makes the learners engage in studying the contents. Present the information using both pictures and words or infographics. Make a good layout with visual icons for each part of the module. As much as possible, okay, if the school allows, okay, better if okay, some okay, icons, some pictures are colored. But the problem is that will be too expensive for printing okay, of our learning modules. Number seven, we have to research our topic. Even if we are subject matter expert, okay, it is better that we ensure that getting the latest updates on the information. Keep the learning modules not too long to keep learning interesting. So break long modules into a series of short modules. Make your introduction clear, okay? Okay, so, so sometimes we call it about the module, okay, overview of the module, make it clear, because the introduction sets the stage for everything that follows. It establishes the contents, okay, the context for your students. It explains why this material is relevant for them to learn. And it clearly states the objectives of the module so they will know what they will be learning in this particular course or subject. Next, we have to speak to our students. So we don't use, I will, okay, in this module, I will answer the following exercises. So it's better to okay, state, okay, you shall be able, you will answer, okay? So use you because the you is referring to the teacher. You are speaking to the students. I have corrected one school, it's because okay, they were instructed to use I, but I said you use you because the you represents the teacher. You should be able to speak to the students through that module. Clearly summarize, okay, so that the takeaways okay, take of this module are 
okay, very, very clear to them. Then make your learning module engaging and interactive for your students. And most importantly, bring some fun into the learning. Now, what are the qualities of a good learning module? One, clear organization of content, sequencing of contents or tasks, completeness or adequacy, variety, inclusivity, and then we have readability. So these are the qualities of a good learning printed module. Clear organization of content, the way we sequence the contents and the tasks, everything is there, complete, adequate, all information, all lessons that you want the students to learn are already okay, presented in the module, okay, varied, Okay, in terms of activities, activities, assessment, drills are varied. Okay, icons are varied. Next, we have inclusive, it should be fair. Then, readability. Now, clear organization of content. As I mentioned earlier, the way we organize our learning modules depends on the instructional designs. The instructional designs I presented to you are all student-centered. The way you organize the contents of your module will reflect your philosophical orientation. Are you teacher-centered or are you student-centered? In a school, I went for a workshop on module development. When I asked the teacher to present their module for critiquing, sa activity pa lang, ang comment ko, okay, can students do the activity without the input of a teacher. I think it would be hard for the student to do that activity without the input of a teacher. And therefore, the way you organize the contents in your learning module is teacher-centered, but not student-centered. Next, sequencing contents and tasks. Once we have decided on the contents of the learning module, we have to put it into a suitable order for teaching. I think I have already mentioned on how we sequence. Very important, the gradual release of materials. Another is we have to begin from simple to complex, from known to unknown, okay? Am I correct? From concrete to abstract, that is how we sequence the contents and the tasks. Next, we have completeness and adequacy. Completeness. Okay, you've got it all. Everything is found in the learning module. Okay, wala nang hahanapin ang mga estudyante natin. Okay, you don't need to refer them to another book. You don't need the students to open another window for them to be able to answer, okay, for them to be able to perform exercises, okay, and reels. Complete that okay, refers to the extent to which materials supply the learner where information and support needed to achieve an instructional goal. This will depend on the chosen instructional model or instructional design. So another is there should be variety. Our activities are varied. Our drills are varied. Our exercises are varied. Our assessments are varied. Now, to make all of these activities, drills, exercises, assessments varied, I suggest that okay, we use the Dale's cone of experience. According to Dale, if we ask the students simply to read, like for instance, if most of our learning modules, the activity is always read, 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 and read. Okay, can we have another learning module? The activity is Another, not reading, but instead, okay, we ask the student to observe. Another is to ask the students to listen. Then we ask the student to okay, observe and to listen. And then we ask the student to tell, to write. And then we ask the student to do it by themselves. So activities must be varied. Likewise, in our drills, exercises, and assessments, using the daily code of experience, okay, we can ask perhaps on the first module, define, list down, describe, explain. And then okay, we can ask the students in the next module, 
demonstrate, apply, practice, and then another module, analyze, design, create, and evaluate. Okay, we have to be varied okay, in our activities, drills, exercises, and assessments okay, for our students to make learning very exciting, okay, to make our learning much fun for our students. Next, we have readability. Okay, explain difficult ideas. Okay, simple words are better. Explain difficult ideas as simply as possible and assess our students to integrate new knowledge into their own personal knowledge structure. And this is what we call integration. What they learn okay, from our learning module should be integrated into their personal lives. So, okay, readability, we have to avoid word jargon. Now, if it is unavoidable for us, these word jargon, like for instance, in science, there are technical terms, okay, jargons, then I would suggest if we can also attach word or glossary. Now, can we attach a glossary? Okay, so readability. Next, inclusivity. Okay, activities must be performed by all, not only by few. No one is left behind. Okay, no one, no student is left behind. It's because of that particular activity. Like for instance, in our learning module, our activity is open this website and watch this video. The problem of that activity, how about those without internet connection? Is the activity inclusive? All students can do the activities, exercises, drills, and assessment. Okay, so those are the qualities of a good learning module. Let me repeat. Oh, we have these characteristics. Number one, clear organization of content, the sequencing of contents and tasks, completeness or adequacy, variety, inclusivity, and the last, readability. Let me give you a sample K module. So this is the module I presented to our teachers in the Atene grade school. So module one, and the topic is safety measures in using household materials. So we begin with an introduction okay, about the module and another word for that is the overview of the module. So we have it here. Many common products in your homes contain chemicals that can cause injury or death if you do not handle, store, or use them properly. Some of the household products contain hazardous chemicals that contain, that cannot be recycled and reused. Okay, these have to be thrown, it will be thrown out, okay, with the trash, okay, of hazardous ways facility. Safety precautions are very important. In this module, you will learn how to store, dispose, and use household materials to keep you and your family safe. Okay, then we have lessons and coverage. In this module, you will learn the following lessons. Lesson one, the use of household materials. In this lesson, you will identify the uses of household materials. Lesson two, the storage of household materials. In this lesson, you will determine the proper way of storing household materials. And last lesson, disposal of household materials. In this lesson, you will identify the proper disposal of household materials and name the possible effects when household materials are not properly used, stored, and disposed. And then we have the module map. Now, what is good of having module map is that, okay, for visual learners. So, okay, it is easily understood by our students what will be covered in this module when we present a module map. So, okay, the topic is about household materials, but as we discuss household materials in the learning module, okay, the subtopics with this, okay, on this, 
use of household materials, the storage of household materials, and disposal of household materials. Next, we have learning competencies. Okay, so I already included the Filipino translation of learning competencies, mga kasanayang susukatin. So this is cut and paste from the curriculum guide of the Department of Education. Now, the learning competencies are general statements. These are general statements. And we need to unpack these learning competencies. When we unpack the learning competencies, we call them now learning outcomes. So the learning outcomes are written, are developed by a particular teacher. Okay, learning competencies that are already given to us. So in Filipino, mga bunga ng pagkatuto. At the end of the module, you are expected to identify the proper use, storage, and disposal of household materials. Number two, practice safety measures in using storing and disposing household materials. Very important in our learning outcomes, there should be cognitive and performative. It is very, very important. Now, since we are in Catholic schools, can we also include value integration in our learning modules? Now, expected skills, inaasahang kasanayan. So we have it here. We have eight, obtain a better understanding of the use, storage, and disposal of household materials. Practice the proper ways of using, storing, and disposing household materials. Carefully read the reading, carefully read the module and do the activities neatly and accurately. Take the lessons according to the sequence they are presented in the scope or outline. Carefully read and understand the lesson presented. Answer the questions on your own without referring to other reference materials. Work for your own learning as you do the exercise. And lastly, we tell our students, we assure them, okay, that we are just around, text away, they can send a message using Messenger. Do not hesitate to contact me as your teacher if you need help. Next, we have learning contract. Now, what is good of including learning contract in our learning module is that we want our students to own their own learning. We want them to be responsible of their own learning. Now, we have here learning contract. Okay, so I'm using the Okay, the four four H, uh, the four W's and one H. And then after the learning, okay, learning contract, we now begin. Okay. Now I'm using the four A's. In this particular sample learning module, I'm using okay, the four A's. So I begin with activity one, pagsasagawa. Activity one, look around in your house and name as many as you can the household materials you see. Write the household materials you see in your house in the box. This learning module is intended for grade one or grade two. Now, another activity, write down how the household materials are properly used and their warnings. Now, activity should be enough. Drill should be enough. Assessment should be enough. Because usually our module is developed good for one chapter or good for one week. Then we have activity three. Below our household materials, classify these materials according to their uses. If you notice activity one and activity two, activity two, okay, simply what they do is to list down what they see, household materials they see around in their house. Number two, write down household materials and also okay if they can write the warnings because this can be copied okay in any okay, household materials but activity three okay is a little okay, difficult for grade two below are household materials we ask them to classify instead of simply naming simply a blessing down but in activity three activity three we're asking them to classify them next we have Okay, we ask the students okay, to write their answers. The classification is according to enhancing the flavor of the food, preparing for cooking and eating, for carpentry and beautifying the house, another classification, clean, okay, cleaning agents, 
And the last, we have toiletries. So activity number three, they classify according to these. And next, we have activity four. Classify the following household materials below. Write them in proper column. So we have four activities. And perhaps the four activities are already enough. Okay, we have another activity five. Enough for a week. At least we have one activity for our students every day. So we have another activity. Below are the list of common household materials. Write each material in the table below. Indicate also their uses and how they are properly, okay, how to properly handle each material. And now, after the activity, we now proceed to analysis. Pagsusuri. So we begin with activity. That is the, I'm using the 4A. The instruction model that I use in this particular learning module is 4As. Activity, we begin with activity. Next, we proceed to analysis. Now, the problem is that when our activity is not clearly or properly selected, it will be difficult for us to proceed okay, to our analysis. Mayihirapan tayo to proceed to analysis when activities are not connected to the lessons we want to introduce in the K learning module. So we have analysis. So when you are in the kitchen, what activities do you usually do? What do you use in doing those activities? How do you handle household materials properly? So we have analysis, okay? From the activities, we ask the students questions. And these questions, answers to which will lead us to lesson proper. And that is now abstraction, paghalaw. So this is our lesson. So read and learn. So we have, okay, I have already presented the lesson proper. If you notice, there are pictures, and the pictures are okay, placed in different okay, parts of the module. So these are colored. Ideally, for a kinder up to grade three, okay, pictures are in color. However, okay, since okay, making them colored, that will entail a lot of expenses in the printing. So we have now abstraction. This is the lesson proper. Now, so we are done with activity. We are done with analysis, okay? I am presenting to you now the abstraction. And then after abstraction, we have now application. We have now application. So we have exercise one. We have exercise two. We have assessment. So in the application, we have exercise one and we have exercise two. As much as possible in our application, okay, we have to avoid of giving quizzes. Okay, as much as possible, the application is more on how the student should be able to integrate what they learn from the lesson we presented into their personal lives. Now, after application, so we are done with the four A's, the instructional model, okay, I use in this learning module. One is activity, analysis. Next, we have abstraction. And then we have a application. Now, after the application, okay, this is that part of okay, the four A's. Of course, we should always end with assessment. This is very important. So we have assessment one, pagtataya. Okay, so this is our assessment. So okay, before assessment, we have provided them with exercises. Exercises will prepare our students for assessment. Then I have another pagtataya, assessment two. And then our module should end with other reference materials. Okay, if students want to learn further about the lessons we present in our learning modules, what other reference materials can they use? So these are other reference Okay, references or other reference materials we recommend to our students if they want to further learn about the topic, about the lessons okay, we present in the module. And then lastly, okay, what are the sources we used okay, as we develop this module? Mga sanggunian sa paggawa ng module. So this is a very simple okay, sample of a learning module, especially for those who teach in the elementary. For those who teach in high school, we can cascade the level of difficulty, the complexity of our activities, the complexity of our drills and okay, 
exercises and also of assessment. Uh, I'm very sorry I wasn't able to attach another sample of a module using five E's, okay? I have another sample module, but instead of four A's, I use the five E's. So engage, explore, elaborate, explain, and then evaluate. So it is good that from time to time, our learning modules will vary. So it will also be good that one department will use one instructional design, another department will use another design to make our learning modules in our school more varied. Now, to be able to check, to be able to evaluate if our learning modules are indeed good, let me present to you the checklist. So first is the parts of our learning module. Now, looking into the parts of our learning module, number one, the objective outcome is indicated at the start of the module of our lesson. In a sample module that I presented, we begin with learning competencies followed by learning outcomes. So number one, check. Number two, the overview of the lesson contents that will be covered is provided. We started with about the module overview of the module, introduction. Our answer here, check. Number three, are the contents substantial? Are the contents complete and adequate? Checked. When I went to one school, okay, when the teacher presented the module he developed, okay, the, the presentation, the abstraction, the lesson proper is only a half page. Kalahating pahina lamang, sabi ko, is that enough for a week? If your module is meant for a week, is intended for a week, is that enough? Is that adequate? Is that complete? Okay, I think it's that complete. Okay, next number four. The learning tasks are aligned with the learning outcomes. This is always the common difficulty of many teachers when they develop learning modules. The learning outcomes, when, when we developed the learning modules, the tasks, the activities, the drills, exercises are very far from the learning competencies, are very far from the learning outcomes. Okay, we have to be guided by construct, okay, constructive alignment. Constructive alignment. Constructive alignment simply tells us everything begins from the learning outcomes. Okay? Our teaching learning activities should always be aligned with our learning outcomes. Our drills, our exercises, and our assessments should also be aligned with learning outcomes. The problem is that as we develop our learning module, we forget the learning outcome. Now, our answer for number four, yes, check. Now, practice tests are provided before the final assessment. Our answer here is yes. We have exercise one, we have exercise two before assessment one and assessment two. Next, number six, assessment is provided at the end of the lesson, okay? Were there assessments in our learning module? Yes, we have assessment one, and we have assessment two. Number seven, additional learning resources are provided to supplement students who need to learn further, okay? Towards the end of our learning module, we have other reference materials. We refer our students, if you want to learn further about the lessons covered in this module, okay, these are other reference materials. So our answer for number seven, Yes, this is found in our sample okay, learning module check. So we are done with our checklist with regard to our okay, to the part of learning module. Now we proceed to the appearance of our learning module. The appearance should be appealing. The appearance should be captivating to our learners. Number one, there are various representations of the contents, textual images, textual, images, infographics, okay, visual icons. There is, okay, there are pictures, there are images, 
Okay, the font also varies. Okay, font should be it should also vary. If this is a major topic, it can be bold, or perhaps the font number is bigger. Okay, the font is bigger. But if this is a subtopic of a major topic, the font will also vary. Okay, the font size will also vary. Okay, next, the flow of the content from the initial activity to the last part are all found on the same page. Okay, okay, dapat lahat, okay, it should be found on the same page. Next, the graphics and images are relevant to the focus of the lesson. Okay, the graphics, the images are well chosen. Okay, okay, the graphics, the information, uh, the, the images, the pictures are very appropriate to the lessons okay, presented in our learning module. The length of the lesson, because okay, we said that our learning module should not be too long to, cap okay, to capture the interest of our learners. The length of the lesson is appropriate to the learner. Okay, it should only be enough. It should not be too too short or too long, okay, appropriate okay, to our learners. And then lastly, as we mentioned, okay, our learning module is not only a presentation of contents. Learning module is not a simple handout. Learning module should facilitate learning. That is why earlier I said, you ask yourself, if you teach these lessons in class, or in the classroom, how would you teach this, okay, in the classroom? Then put that in the learning module, okay? It should elicit learning. So number one, prompts or activities are provided to obtain immediate response from the learners. We have activity one, activity two, three, four, and five. For a week, every day, the student has to do something. Activity one, perhaps on Monday. Activity two for Tuesday, Wednesday three, four, Thursday, and five on Friday. But since the okay, learning module, the module approach is self-paced, the students may answer activity one, two, and three. It's up to them. Okay, next, several exercises are provided. We have a lot of exercises. Final assessment is aligned with the learning outcome. We have two assignments. The lesson contains questions that elicit critical thinking, okay? So uh, very important that in our activities, in our exercises and assessments, we have to be mindful that okay, we should be able to ask questions that elicit higher order thinking skills. That is why okay, we should also be varied in terms of asking questions. Dilang, list down, name, identify, hindi ganon. Okay? Why don't we ask, create, demonstrate, explain, analyze, infer, hypothesize? Uh oh. Okay. Next, there are assessments that are performance based. Okay. So we have to include, if you notice in our sample learning module, the first assessment is pen and paper, it's written. However, the second is performance-based. Performance-based okay, assessments, okay, it is a performance-based when the question elicits many possible answers. When there's no one correct answer, okay, that is performance-based. However, if our question elicits only one correct answer, then that is a written test. So our first assessment is written tests. There are one correct answer, or there is only one correct answer in each of those questions. But the second assessment is a performance-based assessment because there are many possible answers to the questions. So, okay, we continue now. Eliciting, okay, learning. Activities are designed where learners have the opportunity to collaborate. Even if they are physically okay, remote, they can collaborate with their, with their classmates through texting, through messaging. Okay, so there are ways on how we can encourage our students to collaborate, even if they are physically remote. The sequence of the contents is logical and sequential. The release of materials is gradual, right pacing. I think I have mentioned this one. The release of materials, gradual 
get the right pacing. The lesson helps learners process information before the face-to-face -face session okay, comes. So if the government allows face-to-face -face session, perhaps in January or February, we don't need to reteach the lessons covered in the okay, in the learning modules. Okay, so that ends my presentation, but I want to acknowledge the sources of my okay, PowerPoint presentation. We have Carlo Magno, that okay, Carlo Magno is connected at the La Salle University. Next, we have Marlene Balagtas of Philippine Normal University. Next, we have Dr. Spike of St. Louis University. And I also use okay, material coming from our USEC Dad San Antonio. Next, we have okay, Dr. Suarez of Atyo de Manila. And I also use this site okay, from the internet. Okay, thank you so much okay, for listening to my talks on writing learning modules effectively. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc Popoy, for the very enlightening discussion you've shared with us today. And I believe our viewers have something to ask you. But before that, we'll be having a short break. My break. Hello po, sir. Po. Iyo po, recorded kay yan, sir. Tos.
So everyone, you can use this time to comment down your questions while Doc Popeye takes his time to prepare for the Q&A portion. We will entertain some interesting questions that needs clarification later. So yung may mga questions po, um, mag-comment na lang po kayo and um, pipili po kami ng mga four questions po na if a flash is came, nasasagutin po ni Doc Popoy mamaya. And we're back. We will now have our Q&A portion with Doc Popoy. So, to Doc Popoy, we have a question from Ayla. What kind of assessment tool we need to apply in order to know the effectiveness of our written modules and the kind of instructional design we used? Okay, number one, about assessment tool. The assessment tool will depend on our learning outcomes. It will depend on our learning outcomes. And therefore, 
our learning module is effective if the learning outcomes are attained through our assessment. But I would suggest that our assessment should always include written and the other one is performance-based. There should always be written and there should always be performance-based assessment. Although I highly recommend that since today we are migrating into flexible learning as much as possible if we can also migrate into process-oriented assessment. Process-oriented assessment. As we adjust the instructional delivery, instructional modality, assessment should also adjust. By doing so, our assessment in the classroom will matter so much. So we need to adjust our, our assessment. So I'm always telling to everyone that we have to adapt the process-oriented assessment, but the problem is that we are not familiar with process-oriented assessment. But okay, okay, for, for the meantime, okay, in a module, okay, learning module, I suggest that there should be written and there should be performance-based assessment. Now, as to the instructional design, it depends on your familiarity. Okay, samba yung comfort mo, samba yung comfort mo. Like for instance, for me, my comfort is more into okay, four A's and five E's. Okay, I'm more comfortable of designing a learning module using the five E's and the four A's. And also it depends upon the grade level. I mentioned earlier that I would suggest from kinder up to grade three, if we can use the GRR, the gradual release of responsibility. Because when we teach in the kinder, it always begins from asking teacher. We don't okay, begin with allowing the students to do a lot, okay? So it begins from us. However, gradually we are releasing the responsibility to our students. So it depends, okay, on our subject. It depends on our okay, grade level we are handling. And it also depends on our familiarity, no? Are we familiar to this okay, different okay, instructional models? Thank you very much, Doc Popoy. So our second question is from D. Kahorao. His question is, sir, if we are going to conduct a pretest, in which part of the module are we going to put it? Now the pretest is always before. Okay, it's always before. Okay, the, the first part of the instructional model. So we have, okay, like for instance, in my sample learning module, okay, it begins with about the module and then followed by learning competencies, learning outcomes, and then we have the learning contract, expected skills, and then we have the lesson map. Am I correct? Then after the lesson map, then you present your pre-tests. Okay, that is before you start okay, the, the design, the instructional design that you want to adapt. So if you adopt, if you want to adopt the four A's, we have one, activity, analysis, abstraction, application. So the pretest should be presented before activity, before activity. And the post-test should be presented before okay, the final assessment, before the final assessment. Okay? Thank, thank you very much, Doc Popoy. So our third question is from... No way on bow. His question is, during the teaching learning process used in the face-to-face -face in previous years, there is still a good number of failures. How can we address this? That is why I mentioned that feedback is very, very important here. I think this is really the problem of modular or flexible learning. It's because even in the classroom, when we had a face-to-face, -face, a lot of students failing, a lot of students not able to catch up with our lessons. Okay, immediate feedback is very, very important. I even suggest that to many schools I've been to, that can we, can we give to our students our cell phone number? Can we make our social media, like for instance, Facebook, Messenger, so that students can readily ask questions, okay? can readily okay, inquire from us on how to proceed? So immediate feedback comments are very, very important here. If we want our student to move forward to the next curriculum objective, then feedback is very, very important here. Okay, that is one of the characteristics of program instruction. Because the module approach okay, is based on the okay, program instruction of Skinner. Immediate feedback, immediate feedback is very important. So I even ask teachers, can you put into the learning mode your, your cell phone, your Facebook account, your messenger, whatsoever? Okay. That is why in my class, when I had my intercession okay, class, I had four intercession classes. Okay. 
I just completed last week with the accountants of Ateneo. I allow them to submit okay, in any okay, platform. If you want to comment, if you want to ask questions, send it okay, through my Facebook or perhaps in the Google okay, Classroom or in the okay, Gmail okay, account. Okay, you can text me. It's up to you. No, just inform me ahead that okay, your comment, your questions, your queries about the topic are sent through okay, text, messenger, and so forth. So the secret here is to avoid okay, a big number of failures is feedback. Okay, feedback. Uh -oh. That is why I'm very happy that I did now. now. Okay, from 7 o'clock, okay, from the very beginning, early in the morning, the Facebook, am I correct, is open until... And like before, we were only allowed to open our Facebook account during lunch break. And this is making available okay, for students who have questions about our lessons in the module. Promptly Thank and clearly communicate the feedback. Thank you very much, Dr. Okay. Popoy. So our fourth question is from Ms. John Concepcion Alejo. Her question is, Will a performance-based quarterly assessment be okay as compared to written assessment for QA? Now, um, when we had our webinar last week on portfolio assessment, you know, okay, my introduction in that webinar okay, is because of my conversation with our USAC secretary. And okay, according to USAC secretary, because I was okay, recommending, I was suggesting that okay, our assessment should be more process-oriented rather than product because the problem of product-oriented assessment is we do not know who works for the product. The problem of pen and paper is that we do not know who answers the questions. Or perhaps as the student answers the periodical examinations, the students are assisted by parents or a tutor or anyone for them to write the answers. And so, okay, I am really into process-oriented you know, assessment. Now, um, the performance-based assessment will really answer about the integrity of our tests. The integrity okay, of our tests. The problem of written test is the integrity of tests. The results are highly questionable, are highly questionable, okay? So that's the problem of written test because written test, the definition of written test, when there's only one correct answer that is written test, even essay question, if the essay question requires only one correct answer, it cannot be performance-based, but it is written test. But if the essay question, unless it's many, possible answer than that is performance. Now, in the process-oriented assessment, okay, we ask the students to draft, okay, there's a draft paper, and then we ask them, okay, we submit the draft, the unpolished key work of our students, okay, that is submitted to us. We comment on the unpolished key paper of our student, then we return with our comments, we ask them to improve it, and then they submit to us the polished key paper. And then we look at the improvement of our students from the unpolished to polished. Now, it's up to you on how to grade it. Perhaps, okay, you give 50% okay, for the final product and 50% okay, more on the improvement of our students from unpolished to polished okay, work. Thank you so much, Doc Popoy. So our last question is from Fielo Carlo Salcedo. In a performance-based module, is it always necessary to give performance tasks? How many these should be? Now, uh, as I suggested, no. you know, okay, we should always include performance okay, tasks in our module. And that is to allow our students to be more interactive and to make our learning module okay, very interesting for them. If our activities, our drills, and our exercises are always written, 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 there is no variety. Okay, there is no variety. In fact, I even mentioned that can we allow our students to collaborate? Even they are physically remote, we allow them to collaborate. Our students are very creative of finding ways to collaborate with their classmates. So there should be written and there should always be performance-based, performance-based. Now, as to the number of performance tasks, I think the best that can answer that is no other than our teachers. It should only be enough, considering that our students are also enrolled in other subjects. If we give them too many performance tasks, okay, I think they cannot complete okay, all of these in just a week. We have to consider, I always suggest to many schools, can we schedule okay, the performance tasks of our students? Perhaps MWF will only be for math, science, and English, and the TTS for other subjects. If every day, 
every subject, there is a performance test. I pity so much our students. Okay, I pity so much. So we have to consider this. I would suggest, my dear beloved teachers, that in this difficult time and this trying time, teachers should not be so much into standardized, but rather it should be more of compassion and very important in a flexible learning that our presence is felt by our students. Okay, we practice the humanized education. The humanized education simply means, okay, I can relate with you. Okay, I understand your situation. I understand your predicament. However, I want you to be responsible of your learning. Okay, so this is my advice okay, as we migrate into flexible learning. So enough is enough. Okay, we have to be mindful that our students are also given performance tests in other subjects. It's a matter of scheduling of performance tests of different subjects okay, by the school. Imagine if the students are enrolled in eight subjects and each of these eight subjects give the students performance tests every day, that is too much. That is too much. Okay. Thank you very much, Doc Popoy, for answering all those questions. So that ends our Q&A portion. At this point, allow us to award the Certificate of Appreciation to Doc Popoy. Ateneo ICTC presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Arnulfo Aaron Oreganit for his involved time as a resource speaker for this webinar session entitled Writing Effective Learning Modules. Thank you very much, Doc Popoy. Salamat po. Welcome Until po. next time po. Salamat po. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Perhaps we can have, we can have another on process-oriented assessment. Because yes, this is the difficulty of many teachers to migrate from pen and paper. Okay, new process yes, sure. assessment. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Doc Papoy. So we would like to invite those who have attended this morning that we will have our seventh webinar session next week. Monday, August 10, 2020, at 2 p.m., entitled Gamification and, and Engagement Tools for Online Learning by Sir Jeffrey C. Beltran. Registration is now open. We will be posting the details of this webinar session on our Facebook page at Ateneo ICTC. So, yung hindi pa po nagla-like ng Facebook page namin, um, ilike nyo na po kasi yung mga webinar sessions po namin, dun po namin halos pinupost. So, yan po. Sana po i-like nyo po yung Facebook page namin. So, also, we would like to thank our viewers for staying with us throughout the session. So, your certificates are ready. Can you accomplish the online evaluation flash on screen? The online evaluation will be closing at 5 p.m. this afternoon. So, i-type nyo na lang po yung sa browser nyo yung link. And magko-close po yung evaluation mamayang 5 p.m. So, sana hindi nyo po kalimutan na i-fill out yun ngayon.
as much as we would love to hear Father Arnold's message to everyone, there might have been a glitch from the video clip that makes it unable for the sound to be heard. Nonetheless, we wanted to thank Father Arnold for being part of this webinar. Thank you, Father Arnold of Bicol Association of Catholic Schools. Again, thank you everyone. Kindly of like our Facebook page at Ateneo ICTC and subscribe to our YouTube channel to get updates on our free webinar sessions and, uh, and upcoming training online. See you again for our next webinar. Thank you and happy lunchtime. <laughs>